Hello there, Atheist Junior here, your friend and humble narrator, and I'm coming to you guys with another installment of my Whack and Atheist live stream series. So I hope you're excited, as excited as I am, because this is going to be a, a good one. <laughs> so I am coming off of uh, a debate performance with Kent Hovind that I am very happy with. I think it was easily my best debate so far. Um, and the response I got from you guys, my my community, my viewers was awesome. The amount of positive comments was really awesome to read. I really enjoyed that. And of course, uh, the everybody loved the outfit that I wore. Maybe I should clarify why I did that just for anybody who doesn't know, because there was some confusion. Um, friend of the channel, Dr. Dan Creation Myths, when I posted in the Twitter group that um, he and a couple other of my friends are in YouTubers like Dapper Dino and Guts at Gibbon, um, that I, I was debating Kent on Ernst Haeckel and embryology. He suggested that because Kent insists on constantly talking about science and these drawings from 150 years ago that I should dress up like somebody from the 1800s and that just seemed like a great idea. So I was like, all right, let's do it. Uh, and that kind of turned into not so much dressing up like a, like Haeckel would have looked like the clothes he would have wore. It was more of uh, me trying to look like Gary Oldman in Bram Stoker's Dracula, which I love that movie. It's such a great movie. Um, so I got the costume on Amazon and then I ordered the sunglasses on on Etsy, which Etsy is such a great website, seriously. And uh, yeah, it just sort of it just sort of worked um, and people really liked it and made me made me stand out, I think. But the day after um, the debate, Kent immediately did a whack an atheist on me and we're going to take a look at that today because it's pretty funny so without further a poo i think i'm going to make myself big in this stream why should kent get why should kent's video be bigger than me right you guys can let me know adventureland in lennox alabama tonight we're going to do whack an atheist on wednesday night got the red shirt well sort of red i like the dinosaurs on it brother that's cool yeah we like dinosaurs around here bible says god made everything in six days everything. Dinosaurs lived with Adam and Eve. Okay. Let's see. We're on a bunch of channels. You can get them all on drdino.com. D-R-D-I-N-O. On Brighton. And uh, that's the one that has the stuff about the legal thing, right? Brighton. Yeah. If you want any questions about my case and the jail time and all, they go to Brighton and watch, read, watch that video. We're an old-fashioned, independent, temperamental, fundamental, right-wing, radical, chicken-eating Baptist church. Uh, Stephen Hawking said, I regard the brain as a computer which will stop working when its components fail. There is no heaven or afterlife for broken down computers. That is a fairy tale for people afraid of the dark. I bet he knows different now, doesn't he? Yeah, same. We're in Lenox, Alabama, straight north of Pensacola, 70 miles. How far did you guys come to bring us the bales of hay? Uh, we traveled about 3,700 miles. 3,700 miles from the North Pole? <laughs> oh, the Grand Tour. Okay, well, thank you, brother. Thank you. We've been selling off some of our cows and sheep just because we can't feed them, you know. And uh, yeah, so thank you, brother. All right, let's see. We think God ought to get the glory. So let's see. Crazy weather. We didn't have any hay, and these guys brought a bunch for us. Thank you. Thank you. Saved our hype. Saved our cows. Okay. Tonight, A.J. Patterson. We debated him last night. Um, I mean, Kent knows that I asked him to stop doing this shit. Uh, I guess... Should I call Kent, uh, Kent Hoven, Toko, uh, Lincoln Sawyer? Is that what, should we call you that, Kent? You're, you're triple hyphenated? Kent Hoven, Toko, Lincoln Sawyer. Oh, he didn't want me to use his last name. Oh. Erase that from your memory. Okay. Erase that from your memory as it's currently on my fucking calendar on the screen, Howard. Uh, <clears throat> he claimed the gill slits are still evidence for evolution. Uh, the embryo, we're going to talk about that tonight. I told him I would dissect his first 10 minutes of speech and try to uh, 
show the show the truth about that. Okay, let's see. Help us stay open for free. Join our 777 Club. If you're a member, if you have any questions about it, call Sandra, my sec my wife, secretary, at uh, 855 Big Dino Extension. My sex robot one, and she can answer any questions. We are never charged anything <clears throat> to people to come here for eight years now. No, let's see, uh, almost 7.93 years. I figured it up a few minutes ago. So we do this because people love the Lord who want to help us keep going for free. Whack an Atheist Wednesday is based on the whack-a-mole game where you, they stick their head up and you whack it back down. How many of you have ever played whack-a-mole before? We need to get one of those games for here, don't we? I mean, like the real three, the one they use at arcades, yeah. Eugenie Scott, um, if you want to know a cool behind the scenes fact, uh, Gutsick Gibbon just had a conversation with uh, Jeannie Scott yesterday, which I would, I hope they filmed that because I would love to see that conversation. Okay. It's a game they stick their head up and stick and whack them back down, sweetly in Christian love. It's fast, it's fun. The goal is to see how fast you can whack them down. Children love to play it, adults love to play it. Well, whack an atheist is very similar. We wait for them to stick their head up and say something dumb, like they've got evidence that they're related to a potato, and we whack them back down, okay? <clears throat> a few of them learn to keep their head down. Well, Simon Dan does really good on flat earthers. But once in a while, he's still got to pick on creation. As Simon Dan, I'm going to have to whack you again one of these days. There is no evidence for your dumb religion of evolution, none. But tonight, you get a break. Do you think that matters to Simon Dan when he's getting like a hundred thousand views on a video where he watches your video and decimates you in the view count? Do you think he cares if you whack him? He probably doesn't even know. You're not even on his radar. I'm going to whack you. Okay. I taught high school 15 years. I know how to whack over and over. You got to teach the same thing over and over. I quite enjoy it. So tonight the winner is AJ. I won't say his last name. Is this collage supposed to make me look bad? Because I find it quite uh, flattering, to be honest. I mean, this is just a good collection. <laughs> the fucking sunglasses still crack me up. Uh, okay. <clears throat> they do all kinds. Of, his whole show is about me. The only reason anybody heard of him is because he gets after me all the time. Okay. I think right. I should do a poll if, if uh, among you guys, if you prefer me wearing glasses or contacts on stream, because I know it's a little weird when you see somebody without glasses, but I, I just, it's, it's necessary for me to wear contacts because I have really bad astigmatism in my left eye. Like I can't see shit. Like when I'm shaving, like even with contacts in, when I'm shaving like this side of my face versus this side, like. I can't hardly see, um, but I know it does look kind of weird. Uh, this fan art. I love that Kent is showing this fan art. Shout out to Rylan Adams who did this fan art for me. Oh, was I not supposed to say his last name? Um, tomorrow, I've been, I commissioned somebody on Fiverr to make me a custom thumbnail for my debate. So tomorrow, um, you guys are going to see that. I can't wait to see how it turned out because it's going to be like an animated version of me and Kent, like a cartoon version. Um, but like, you know, a versus like with and I asked him to put like health bars, like a video game. And it's going to be me in my costume and then a cartoon version of Kent. I think it's going to be really funny. Um, I don't know. I haven't seen how it turns out yet because the guy's still drawing it. But, you know, shout out to Fiverr. On my coattails. He did a show called Whack a, a Shyster. It was got me on the ground and all these guys, other. Uh, the guy with the black hat and the face, what's his name? Uh, Logic. He did, a, I didn't know. Somebody told me he did a whole series about my video series, claiming he debunked it. I haven't seen it yet. It's what, like five years ago or something. But if you think so, uh, anything, anything he brought up, let me know. Get my whole video series, 50 bucks, 18 hours for the whole thing, and make all the copies you want and give them away to your friends. Don't sell them. Okay. So let's go to what uh, Mr. A.J. Blank, uh, no last name, said about uh, last night in the debate. Is that it? Right there. No. Hang on. Got to do this. I got too many buttons open on my... Oh, right there. Okay. Let's do something. Hit play. Uh, can't see. I preemptively apologize for the audio. I meant to edit this video and put in the original footage from my debate, but... Uh, I didn't, so sorry about that. The buttons. 
Ah, look at that. Well, praise God. Okay. Here goes Mr. AJ. Uh, no last name. We're just going to jump right into it. We've got opening statements. <coughs> Again, the topic. Evidence. I just have to wonder what most people were thinking when they first saw me fucking show up like this in the debate. Like, <laughs> Kent, in the offline, Kent said that uh, that my sunglasses looked like Elton John's. Which to me, that's a compliment because Elton John is one of the greatest musicians of all time. And I think he, he's, I like his fashion. You know what I mean? So it's, I don't take it as an insult. And Donnie was asking him like, oh, do you know about, about the Lion King? And he was like, oh, is that an animated movie? I was like, it's only the greatest animated film of all time, Kent. So I, I prefer a real life. I prefer reality to watching movies. For evolution, but specifically the question, does embryology prove evolution? And so AJ, we are going to hand it right over to you for 10 minutes. Floor is yours, go ahead. Awesome, thank you so much, Donnie, uh, for hosting this and thank you, Kent, for taking the time. So um, this debate is gonna be about a topic of embryology and is it evidence for evolution and also- Kent, I mean, I know I've said this before, but I won't mention the internal audio, but like at least get some soundproofing foam. Like I've got sound dampening foam all in front of the in, in front of me on the wall in front of me because my voice, the sound waves of my voice are reverberating off of the wall. And if I don't, if you don't have anything there, they get picked up, they bounce off the wall, a hard surface like that, and they get picked up by the mic a second time, which is why you're hearing the reverb. But soundproofing foam has uh these little channels in it where the sound waves get caught in there and reverberate back and forth rather than just reflecting back so harshly so like do something man you've been a youtuber for longer than i have and like this shit is just unacceptable ernst Haeckel. so just getting into a biography of, of Haeckel. he was a uh, german and he had many titles the most relevant being that he was a zoologist he was a zoology professor He's a naturalist and he was a, a, a great artist. And he discovered many thousands of new species. He mapped the tree of life and he coined many terms of biology that we still use today, like ecology, biome, biology, and even Kent's favorite, the protista. So Kent can thank Hegel every time he mentions a protist from now on. Um, he taught at the University of Jena in 1862 because he was a zoology professor, not an embryology professor. And he developed the no, no longer widely held nor taught recapitulation theory, which is ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny, which... That's a fancy phrase. Ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny. <clears throat> okay, so we have a super chat for $5 from Chris. Apparently, you really wanted me to read this message. It says, yesterday, Kent said that he did not trust the dating methods used in dating the biblical manuscripts. Yeah, well, uh, of course he'll say that, but... If you if you challenged him on that point, he'd probably just change his position in the moment. Like Kent will just backpedal anything that he's said before if he has to. So he he doesn't have any strongly held positions, or he 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 does. But if you really challenge him on him, he'll fold faster than Superman on Laundry Day. Thank you for the super chat. He made up that phrase. What that means is. <clears throat> As the baby's growing inside the mother, it goes through the stages of evolution, fish, amphibian, reptile, mammal. And in ontogeny, the growth of the baby recapitulates or reenacts phylogeny, the whole evolution theory. This is real stupid, but he invented that phrase. Well, man, if he invented a phrase that we use today, that means he's got to be important. Okay. Did you miss the part where he named thousands of species? He discovered and named thousands of new species, Kent. Got to be important. He invented the idea that as the baby grows in the mother, it starts off like a fish and then becomes an amphibian and then becomes a reptile, then becomes a mammal. I believe it's, it's human the moment it's conceived, okay? Instantly, not anything else. But he made up the phrase, so give him some credit, okay? <clears throat> I'm gonna talk about that more in my next slide. And he published drawings of different species of vertebrate animals in their embryonic state. Now these drawings, have this is critical. He published pictures. He was an artist, an excellent artist, okay? He published pictures of these animals as they're developing inside the mother at different stages of their life. And as we'll see, he lied, okay? 
But AJ wants to defend him anyway. They've been very controversial. You could call them really the most controversial photos in the history of science. So autogeny capitulates phylogeny versus evo devo. So another term could evo devo, evolutionary development. Uh, there is no evolution, AJ. Nothing changes to a different kind of animal. Nothing. There's no evidence for your religion at all. Give it up. I wish you guys would. That's okay. I'll help you. I'm here, I'm here to help, okay? Call 855-BIG-DINO, extension 3. We will counsel you and try to get you out of that cult you're in of evolution. I'm here to help. Okay, okay, okay. Kent has no idea what Evo Devo is. Like, this, there was no reason for him to pause there and say that stuff. It meant nothing, and it there was no relevance or meaning to it at all. It was just him restating the the ironically the catchphrases that he always does he acts like he doesn't have catchphrases that he's invented you know what i mean he said criticizing hateful for inventing a phrase when he has a bunch of his coined trademarked phrases his hovenisms hovenisms so this is a bio, biogenetic law so this is a debunked and outdated idea that hateful proposed and it's basically the idea that an organism's embryonic development will take it through each of the adult stages of its evolutionary history or its phylogeny. So Haeckel took this idea way too far when he claimed that vertebrate embryos literally become fish in the womb of mammals. Wait a minute. He's saying this biogenetic law has been debunked. But you watch. In the biology books, they still use it. I got a whole flock of them here. I don't know how many biology. We can go through a bunch today. Just for you, Mr. Patterson. I mean, AJ. Okay. Just because you said, like, you you just did that now? Why didn't you do that in preparation for the debate? You know what I mean? However, evo Devo is a scientific field of evolutionary development. It's a field of biological research concerned with how changes in the embryonic development during single gestation relate to the evolutionary changes that occur between generations, or basically the relationship between the evolution of an embryo in the womb versus the evolution of the entire species. So you got two choices. It evolved in the womb or the whole species evolved. There's a third choice. It didn't evolve at all. You guys are un incapable of even thinking outside your little box of evolution. You can't even think outside that box. It only suggests that embryos are similar in their early stages, but then they become increasingly different until they, they develop into their adult form. Then they're obviously different, like an adult turtle and an adult pig are basically different, but in the earliest stages of them being an embryo, they do look quite similar. That's his whole argument. For the whole next hour and a half, whatever long this debate was, two hours, they look similar. Which means, you know, a bowling ball and a grape look similar? Don't they? That proves something to somebody somewhere. Mm -hmm. Let's just talk for a few minutes here. If we can. So what? Like... We're talking about embryos, specifically vertebrate embryos. Why do you always have to make some dumb analogy to something else? Like anything to avoid talking about the actual data or the actual subject at hand. So we don't run out of time here. So I'm going to go to my PowerPoint slides that he objects to. Let's see. We're going to start with embryology. Nope, nope, not that one. Let's see. Right here. This is what I've been covering for 35 years now about Haeckel's fraudulent drawings. And AJ's uh, objection last night was that there was no trial at the University of Jena. We'll see. Here's a biology textbook. It says, many organisms uh, have similarities in patterns of development are caused by common descent. No, they're not. This is a dogma statement. This is not a scientific statement. This is somebody preaching their religion in a science class. Let's blow it up here. You're just saying it's wrong, but you don't explain how. How? Why is it a dogma statement? What is it that's about this that's incorrect? These and many other similarities and patterns of development are caused by common descent. That's, not, that's just a bold-faced lie. You don't know any such thing like that. Anteater and whale embryos have teeth because anteaters and whales evolve from organisms with teeth. This is just plain propaganda, folks. This is called stupid. I'll debate all these textbook authors any day of the week, any day. Bring it up, okay? I'll debate all these textbooks at the same time. I'll debate all the words on this page. I'll debate the ink. Similarly, humans and fish embryos resemble each other because humans and fish share a common ancestor. 
This is the propaganda that the kids get in school all the time, and it's supposed to be some kind of science. I got way too many books on top of my chart, brother. Ah, hang on. One moment, folks. Robert Beatty, it's a it's Robert Beatty's fault in the first place that Kent doxed me because Robert Beatty put posted a, fa a screenshot from Facebook that had my name on it on Twitter. And then one of Kent's people found that. And then a few days later was the first time Kent used it in his video. Praise God for live TV. They make these charts and put them in our kids' textbooks and say, boys and girls, did you? I can't see anything on this chart, Kent. It's tiny. You know, the, the sunflower and the hue frog and the human and the flamingo are all related to a common ancestor. This is what kids are taught. It's constant propaganda every day from kindergarten on about the family. Constant propaganda coming from the guy who has Hitler believed in evolution science taped to the trees at Dinosaur Adventureland and the coffee machine. Honey tree, did you know you're related to a potato and a fish and a salamander? Oh, yeah, look, what's he? You're related to a salad. You're related to a Caesar salad. Caesar, Hoven, Hail Kaiser. The evidence for that, Hail the embryos in the embryonic stage, that's the whole argument. Let's get on here now. They descended from a common ancestor. Darwin considered this, this idea of embryology, the strongest single class of facts in favor of his theory. Haeckel called it the biogenetic law. So I, I messed up during my intro of the debate. I skipped the slide that had Darwin's letter on it. But Darwin specifically says embryology is the strongest single class of facts in favor of his theory. He does not say the biogenetic law was the strongest class of facts because Kent is quoting icons of evolution, which is a creationist book, instead of quoting the actual letter that Darwin wrote. And AJ said, just said it's been disproven now. So it never was really a law, just simply a hypothesis, right? Here's a textbook telling the kids. Evidence for evolution has come from studying the embryos of organisms. That's all. And you see, you see, if you go back and watch my debate, there's a part where I'm trying to get Kent to show this slide right here. I'm asking him to show his first slide that says gills like a fish on it. Because I was saying, Kent, you're saying that textbooks say this, but you wrote that on the slide. You can see it's in a different font on here. Kent wrote this on the slide because this page does not say that they have gills like a fish but he's acting like the textbook says that, which is super dishonest, but he wouldn't even show the slide. I think he knew exactly what I was getting at. He knew what he was doing. He was flipping around all his other slides when I was specifically asking him, like, show the first slide that says gills like a fish. And he's like, oh, is it all these other slides? I have 50,000 slides. So if you answer the questions in order, uh, 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 it'd be better. A lie. They say it has gills like a fish. This is simply not true. These little folds of skin under the jaw develop into. I always like your videos. Can I get a hoven? Hoven? Can I get a hoven? Hoven? Uh, praise. Uh, praise hoven. I can feel. Uh, I can feel hoven on my fingertips. Hoven. Uh, hoven is an awesome hoven. It's been two weeks since you whacked at me. Different bones in the ear and glands in the throat. Never have anything to do with breathing. I've seen fat folks got five or six chins. They can't breathe through any of them. Some people have wrinkles in their elbow when they bend their arm. I bet they can't breathe through them either. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. You ain't nothing but a hoven. Haeckel said the turning point in his thinking was when he read Darwin's book in 18. When's the next young hoven track dropping? I recorded something uh, that I've shared with a few people. Maybe I could play it on my stream. 60. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. These are the drawings of a dog embryo, meaning before it's born, pre-born at four weeks development. And I'll play it at the end of the stream. Mark Stoney knows what I'm referring to in Big Bad Mama. And a human embryo at four weeks. Dogs have 78 chromosomes. Humans have 46 chromosomes. AJ's argument is, well, they look similar. Well, Haeckel- That is not the argument. That's part of the argument. But my main argument was that they share the structures of the pharyngeal arches, the post anal tail, the dorsal nerve cord. Why do you leave that out? Is it because you can't remember them? It's not just that they look similar, dude. This is exactly like the debate before this where he kept saying that, oh, you say a mosquito got a different diet. No, that's not my argument. Made them look similar. He faked the drawings and he was an excellent artist. There's a fabulous article been out on this I'll show you in a minute for a long time showing all the different details of things he changed and faked. And all the way things Dr. Richardson, who gave the photographs I'll show in a minute, 
how he tries to rescue Haeckel by fudging the drawings again. That's a great article, isn't it, Joseph? Yeah. Okay, thank you. The head was increased, the head was decreased in one, the eyeballs changed, the post uh, post posterior length was doubled. None of this matters. That doesn't matter. It's about the structures, not these minor changes that are irrelevant. Haeckel's doctored drawings of a dog and human embryo. So, AJ, if they look similar, even, the, even if the photographs look similar, they have different number of chromosomes. You don't get it. A bowling ball and a grape and an olive look similar, too. That's not evidence of any similarity or common ancestry. How about, I know you're going to... So th if things look similar, that's not evidence of any similarity? Okay. I'm going to say bowling balls don't reproduce. Okay. The olive and the grape look similar, don't they? What other fruits look similar? A tomato. Wow. An apple. What did you call me, Kent? Anything else kind of round like that? Can you think of any? Yeah. Orange. Oh. Kent is literally comparing apples to oranges. What? Onion. onion? Yeah. Can't tell the difference between an onion and an orange. Nobody can tell the difference. Here we go. There's Haeckel's fake drawings on the bottom. Haeckel made these big charts of his fake drawings, and it, tra it really traveled all over the world and became, still to this day, is used as evidence for evolution. Let's see. Fish have anywhere from 25 to 104 chromosomes. They're wildly different in their chromosome number. Salamanders have 14, and there's a lot to learn about 14, about the salamander chromosome. Study that one. The turtle has 56 chromosomes, the chicken has 78, the rabbit has 44, and the human has 46. Yeah, and you know what other animal has 46 chromosomes? Antelopes. And bats, the large bent-winged bat. Grevy zebra, the crowned lemur, the Merriam's ground squirrel, southern short-tailed shrew, these are all vertebrates, mountain beaver, Kirk's dick dick, Bolivian tuco tuco, red titi, Kent, beach vole, Kent, muntjacks, Kent, the black rat, Kent, the European hair, Kent, all have 46 chromosomes. So do, just like humans. What's your point? This is irrelevant. This, like, how does this disprove my argument at all? You just say they have different chromosomes. Okay, well, some vertebrates have the same amount of chromosomes as humans. What does that show? Is, does that mean my argument's right for, for those comparisons? You punk? Let's see, one day ago today, uh, these chromosomes are large linear DNA molecules combined within the cell nucleus. The current version of the human reference genome includes one copy of each of the autosomes plus one copy of the two sex chromosomes, X and Y. The total amount of DNA is 3.1 billion base pairs. This is the code to make you. And that code has to be copied over and over and over again. The copying process is amazing in itself. We've covered that many times on our channel about how it's impossible for the, for the DNA to replicate itself, these chromosomes, and happen, that happened by chance. It's just not possible. It's impossible for DNA to replicate itself? I mean, it's impossible. I mean, it, it, when we're talking about humans, when human reproduction happens, the DNA of the child, the, the, they're try, the DNA is trying to replicate itself perfectly, but it never does because there are replication errors, which are called mutations. But what do you mean it's impossible? If I told you you could drop 3.1 billion Scrabble letters on the floor and it would spell out the Webster's Dictionary, you'd say, come on, no way, that'll never happen. That's right. You'd have to be an idiot to believe such a thing. To believe what? I can't even tell what your argument is here. All right, let's see. So here's what I said that AJ objected to. I said, when tried by the Jenna University court, he confessed and said, a small percentage of my embryonic drawings are forgeries. Namely, those namely for which the observed material is so incomplete and insufficient to fill in and reconstruct the missing links by hypothesis. This is from Dr. Edward Blick, Blick Engineering, Norman, Oklahoma. I tried 
tried to call him today, but I called too late. I'll, I'll try to get a hold of him. This is. Yeah, because he's dead. <laughs> Can't try to call him, but he's dead. Oops. From, he says, from the records of the University of Jenna trial. And AJ said they've never found the records of that trial. Well, that may be true. It is true. There's no evidence that this trial ever happened. Even Wikipedia says so. He said, Hoven, will you stop saying there was a trial? Because you don't know it's true. Well, AJ, will you stop saying you're related to all these animals? Because you don't know that's true either. Saying I don't know that's true either implies that you're admitting that you don't have any evidence for the trial and you don't know if it actually happened, which you don't. The difference being that I do have evidence for common ancestry, which I told you was the fact that vertebrate embryos share the pharyngeal arches, post anal tail, and dorsal nerve cord. That's my evidence that vertebrates share common ancestry. That was the argument. That was the debate. So that's my evidence. What's your evidence for Haeckel having a trial? None. And that's the root of your argument because if Haeckel wasn't convicted of being a fraud, then how can you say that his drawings were fake? If he was never convicted, and you've been saying that for 30 years, that makes you a fraud. Also, you've literally been put on trial for fraud and found guilty. Ken, you're the actual fraud. You believe it's true. I believe there was a trial. I believe he was convicted. I believe that. You believe that. You believe it on faith? Because you have no evidence of it. I can, right now, I don't have the evidence, but I'm getting close. There's going to be some. But this is stuff you believe. This just makes me so happy. It makes me so happy. And you won't admit it's your religion. You won't admit you believe it. You want it taught like it's a fact. And you want me to pay to have all the kids taught this stuff. Well, I is, that, is that the main reason why you just object to all this stuff? Because you think you're going to have to pay for it? Is that the main reason? Is that why you have been fighting against evolution? Because you don't want to have to pay money? It's because you're cheap? That's the whole reason, isn't it? You don't want to pay taxes. I'm going to object to that till I die and keep objecting, objecting after I die because my videos are going to go everywhere. You know, if I, if I, boy, if I die, they'll go viral, won't they? Yeah. Uh, yeah, because your star has really been on the rise lately, Kent. Your engagement numbers are through the roof. It's not worth it. I'm going to stay alive. Okay, here we go. Haeckel said, according to Edward Blick, I should feel utterly condemned were it not that hundreds of the best observers and biologists lie under the same charge. This article in creation.com, Joseph sent this to me. Somebody sent it to you, right? Yes, sir. This is from, uh, what, 10 years ago? Uh, tw 12 years ago, 13 years ago. Okay. Countering revisionism, part one. Ernst yeah, this is what I've been saying. If you if you liked my debate against Kent and you, you're hungry for more, because uh, there's not very many debates that Kent has done on embryology, go and watch James W.'s debate against Kent. Even if you just skip to the section where they talk about Haeckel, the whole debate is really good. But that's one of my favorite debates, and it needs more views. So go and watch James W.'s debate against Kent, because it's awesome. And he, you know, just really does, you know, it inspired some of the stuff I did in my debate against Kent. Like, because he's got big pictures of R and Raw and Haeckel behind him. And then my favorite part is when he pulls out a second picture of R and Raw, because Kent hates R and so much. That's why Kent is doing this to me by saying my last name. It's the exact same thing he did with R and saying, Mr. Nelson, Larry Nelson, Larry Lime Jello Nelson. You know, he's just he, he, anything to uh, avoid the argument and try and undercut somebody by bringing up personal information about them. It just shows that he doesn't have a good argumentation. Hegel, fraud is proven. This is by E. Van uh, Nee Kirk. Okay. Uh, Jonathan said, didn't somebody asked him at the bottom of this article, there's question and answer. Okay. Jonathan said, didn't the German scientific community acknowledge Hegel's fraud way back in the day? I recall reading that it was well established a hundred years ago. In other words, the fraud was well established. Here's the answer from E. Van Niekerk. Yes, there were a number of scientists in Haeckel's day who became staunch critics of his work. It started with the Swiss anatomist and paleontologist Ludwig Hardname and continued with scientists such as great anatomist William Hiss, a zoologist named uh -oh, Arnold Brass, and some of his former teachers like Rudolf Virchow and Albert von Kohlikirk. 
Unfortunately, Hegel won over the newer generation of lay people and scientists alike. So it is true that his own colleagues and his former teachers and people who knew the material at the time, they did not agree. Now, whether there was a trial, I didn't find that out yet, AJ. Thank you for pointing it out. I will be honest. I will try to say from now on, I have heard there was a trial. I don't know. I'd like you to. Are you admitting you've been dishonest for the past 30 years about this trial? Be honest from now on and say, I believe I'm related to a sunflower. Would you just say, I believe it? I don't have any proof, but I believe it. Just believing something doesn't mean you believe it with no evidence and you believe it on faith. Yeah, you could say, I believe the common ancestry is true, but it's a justified true belief based on the culmination of evidence. And the majority of relevant experts in the relevant field of evolutionary biology think the common ancestry is true. And those people are a lot smarter than I am. They're a lot smarter than you, Kent. And they've spent their entire life studying this stuff on a, on a scale that you can't imagine on a level of detail and, and macro uh, level, micro level detail that you can't even understand and with a level of granularity that you can't appreciate. And so I'm going to side with them versus you because you're incompetent. So that's not believing something just based on faith or the fact that I've been saying it and I'm going to look stupid if I, if I admit now that I've been wrong for 30 years, that's why you're clinging to this. But no, it's not an equivalent statement. Be honest, okay? Here we go. I am honest. I'm the most honest person on YouTube. Hand over my breast. 2009, Robert John Richards was invited by our Frederick Schiller University in Jena to speak in the context of the uh, some collo colloquium. The title of his lecture was, was... Hey, to the people in the chat, you, how long have you been in, how long have you been in my cult? Four years? Am I honest? Am I, people in the chat, tell me, am I honest? He was, I think. Ernest von Haeckel, I... I'm going to kick you out if you say something that I, that I don't like. I was a fraudster, a forger. That's in German. I attended the lecture and was amazed at revisionist selective methods used to rehabilitate Ernst Haeckel. See, when you look up the evidence for evolution in most biology books... Uh, Kent, if I could turn back time, uh... I'd, I'd make sure that you never discovered YouTube. Uh, I, I'm sure, bitch. It'll give, em, embryology is always one of them. I, I, I'm always asking people in a debate, what's the evidence for evolution? They'll say fossils, embryology. And it's always one of the three or four best evidences. And if you take this one away, they're gonna panic because this is one of the ones they depend on. Okay, so was he a for- Not really. Do I look like I'm panicking, Kent? Forger. I attended the lecture and was amazed by revisionist selective methods. Even though it's been proven that Haeckel lied, they're still trying to resurrect it. Even Richardson, who took the photographs in, in 98 that showed clearly he was different, Richardson then has doctored his photographs, trying to resurrect, trying to rescue Haeckel, maybe to rekeep his job or okay, at the hospital, I don't know. The lecture was held in our planetarium and many elderly accomplished professors from Jenna, who know Ernst Haeckel's legacy best, were in attendance. As Mr. Richards presented the case, these professors moaned and grumbled repeatedly at his far-fetched and futile attempts to whitewash the work and legacy of Haeckel. Somebody said it's pronounced Haeckel. I don't care. Okay, he's dead. All right. Then why did you mention it? I have a friendship with a zoologist who is one of the overseers of the museum that dedicated to evolutionary studies founded by Haeckel. And even he has called Haeckel a con man. This is well, my dad works at Nintendo. The guy who runs the museum started by Haeckel. Okay. So was there a trial? I haven't found out yet, AJ, but I'll keep looking, right? During the Q&A time, after the lecture, I questioned Mr. Richards about... I actually just find it surprising that Kent would even admit that he's got wrong on this and has no evidence. Because it's like, okay, Kent, well, why don't you... Why don't you also admit that you've completely misrepresented evolution for 30 years, too? And that dogs produce dogs is a straw man argument. Why don't you apply this same thing to every other argument you've ever made? I don't know why you're singling out this thing with the trial and admitting you're wrong about it. It's kind of bizarre, actually. The number of inconsistencies between his lecture and historical facts. He simply dodged the questions and became very irate. Afterwards, he refused to speak with me and went to great lengths to avoid me. 
This is just another attempt by adherence to the theory of evolution to misrepresent history, similar to the fraud, faulty presentation of the famous Scopes monkey trial. Yeah, he was trying to avoid me. I was riding on the underside of his car all the way to his house. And then, you know, I was staring in his bedroom window at night. And then he came and closed the curtains. Like, why are you trying to avoid me? Creep. Okay. Here's at the bottom in the Q&A, same article. Okay. Uh, I remember those drawings proving how similar embryos developed from my high school textbooks. I'm really wondering now if I learned anything useful in these biology lessons back then, or was it all nonsense? And history repeats itself. Watch this. My eight-year-old son came home from school explaining how we developed from fish to monkeys, etc. They watched a movie about it in school. Good. Takes a lot of time to explain correct such things to him. Unfortunately, time is on the side of the teachers. In both cases, the schools had a Christian foundation. So hope they did not do this on purpose. Does it make sense to confront teachers with such mistakes in the books? Or will they just think you're crazy? They will rightfully think that you're crazy. Let's see, University of Cambridge, AJ said, they're not teaching this anymore. Here we go. Haeckel's embryos, the images that would not go away. A new book tells for the first time the extraordinary story of the drawing. The artist was accused of fraud but copied and recopied his images, gaining iconic status as evidence of evolution. Yeah, I, I read this article. It's a great article. And like I said during the debate, there's a distinction between teaching Haeckel's drawings as if they're still relevant today and t using them to talk about the history of science and the development of the field of embryology, which they are very Im important to. They're a key fact in the history of science. Some of the best known illustrations in biology were challenged as forgeries soon after their publication, 140 years ago, in books by the German Darwinist Ernst Haeckel. Hundreds of attacks placed them among the most controversial scientific images. So way back when it was done, they were, the people who were with him were attacking his drawings. So AJ, was there a trial? I don't know yet, I'll find out. Believe me, I'll, I'll dig into it. If any of you are in Germany, you can go to Jenna, do some digging for me, find out. Was there a trial? Is there a record of the actual trial? Because I've heard from a couple other sources that there was, but I don't have firsthand documentation. So any of you Germans over there, if you can help me, please. Okay. This is hilarious. Uh, let's see. In Haeckel's Embryos, Images and Fraud, published by University of Chicago, Dr. Nick Hopeman tells the full story for the first time. He tracks the drawings and the charges against them from their genesis in the 19th century to the present day. He recaptures the shocking novelty of pictures that enthralled school children and outraged priests, and highlights the remarkable ways these images continued to shape knowledge as they aged. Let's see, this is from Cambridge University. Hopewood investigates copying as the way an image gains life of its own and becomes embedded in a field. Mm -hmm. Trouble started mm -hmm. when Haeckel was accused, among other things, of miscopying standard figures. Then copying released the images from his books from many variants selected one canonical form. Controversy sparked when the copying of the images intersected with the repetition of the forgery charges. Okay, New Scientist did an article about it. How fudged embryo illustrations led to drawn out lies. Hmm, New Scientist, hmm. okay. It's embarrassing, but true. Some of the most influential drawings in the history of biology are wrong. Exaggerated to fit a thesis. People would lie to cover their religion? Oh, AJ, nobody would do that, would they? Yeah. Uh, well, you tell me, Kent. Okay. Haeckel wanted to convince his readers that all vertebrates shared a common ancestry. Vertebrate means, vertebrate means they have a backbone, okay? And that is, as he put it, ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny. Ooh. Our embryonic development repeats our evolutionary past. This uh, aphorism, aphorism was soon disproved, but the use of Haeckel's drawings persisted, particularly in education. There were waves of criticism from the 1870s when the drawings were published up to 1997 as Haeckel's fraud was rediscovered and exploited by creationists. <laughs> In his sumptuous book, Nick Hopewood, a science historian, explains how and why Haeckel made his drawings and the use made of them since. His clever detective work takes him into the Haeckel archives in the German town of Jena. Yeah, so these articles are just recapping what happened. They're not saying one way or another, I mean, they're not saying that Haeckel was found guilty of fraud and that there was a trial. Discovering the original drawings and even the woodblocks. 
On the other end of the story, he explores how Haeckel's drawings appeared in, a post -war in post war textbooks in the UK and the US. Stunning illustrations show the way the images have been copied and reinterpreted from the late 19th century. Hmm. So let's see, Sir, uh, Scott F. Gilbert, author in the eight, eight, 1985 development biology textbook, inadvertently used Haeckel's drawings. So are they still being used? Let's see, this is from Arizona State University. In the decades after Haeckel's publication of the biogenetic law, which has been disproven, hasn't it? Other biologists. Yeah, and that's where Aaron Ra uh, got his deg degree from, is ASU. Struggle to recreate Haeckel's results. Franz, somebody with a hard name, a student of Will. Is it pronounced Yena, University of Yena? I actually messaged them on Facebook to ask about the trial, but they haven't wrote me back yet. I'm Hiss and a professor of anatomy at the University in Strasbourg, uh, France, uh, tried to recreate Haeckel's drawings from his own specimens and concluded that Haeckel had exaggerated the similarity between embryos in his drawings. Keibel then therefore rejected the biogenetic law and labeled it as an exaggeration of the truth in 1897. Keibel published his conclusion in the first volume of some German name here, okay? Let's see, read it for yourself. Evolution News did an article about it. Haeckel's fraudulent embryo drawings are still present in biology textbooks. Evolution News is a creationist website in, dis in disguise. Here's a list. Somebody made a list of all the books that still use Haeckel's drawings. Wow. Let's see. This list, or perhaps nearly all, this list known examples of textbooks in recent memory that use Haeckel's drawings. Our colleague's email provides an occasion for doing so. Thus, what follows are examples of the textbooks that show embryo drawings that are either Haeckel's originals or highly similar or nearly identical versions of Haeckel's illustrations. Drawings that downplay and misrepresent the differences among early stages of vertebrate embryos. Or textbooks that have used these drawings as evidence for current evolutionary theory and not simply to provide some kind of historical context, okay? These textbooks have used Haeckel's based drawings to overstate the actual similarities between early embryos like you did, AJ, over. Haeckel's based drawings, <laughs> based theory. Overstate the similarities, which is the key represent, misrepresentation by Haeckel, even if the textbooks do not completely endorse them. These are textbooks by, uh, here's the list. Donald Protho, still using it, let's see. Donald Protho is a paleontologist, geologist, science writer, lecturer, who taught college geology and paleontology for 35 years at Caltech and a couple other places, okay? He has earned a BA in geology and biologist, the highest honors, et cetera. Okay, there he is. So he's still using it in his bringing fossils to life. Why would he use embryology as evidence in a book about fossils? Well, okay, here's some. It's, in, it's a book about paleobiology, Kent. Books that he wrote. Let's see, Inquiry into Life, Human Biology, Biology Textbook on the right, okay? Sylvia Mader has written quite a few books, uh, author, okay? Very prolific biology author. Sylvia Mader. Should have stayed in the kitchen, biology author. Mader, see your friends have read any of Sylvia Mader's books. Okay, uh, let's see. She wrote these books. These are books that Sylvia Mater is the author of. Very prolific, writing on the topic of biology. What's her evidence for evolution? Well, let's see. Evidence for evolution. Embryological development. All vertebrate embryos have a post-anal post tail and paired pharyngeal gill pouches. That's true. AJ, contact Sylvia and say, stop it. You're lying or you're stupid. And I'll no, she's not lying and she's not stupid. She's correct. Bait her or anybody else. She is still using in her textbooks the idea that they have gill pouches. <sighs> Used the word gill, didn't she? Okay, this is evidence for evolution. Can you get over this thing about the, the word gills? Like I made it very clear in my opening the difference between the term gills and gill slits. They have different meanings. That's why they're not the same exact term. Embryo embryological development. All vertebrate embryos have a post-anal tail and paired pharyngeal gill pouches. That's true. Hmm. Let's see, we have Peter Raven. Well, he's a prolific author too. Peter Raven, a world-renowned plant biologist. What kind of gills do plants have?
Okay. Raven holds honorary degrees from several universities, including University of Minnes Massachusetts, uh, Gothenburg, Sweden, and Rutgers, and a bunch of... Hey, shout out to Rutgers. That's where Dr. Dan is, teaches at. ...the places. So is it okay to have an honorary degree and call him doctor? Is, AJ, would you call Raven Dr. Raven? I have... Obviously, I would. ...three earned doctor's degrees and one honorary. You can call me Kent or Bubba or hey you. Come back to the topic, and I won't call. I won't mention your last name's Patterson. Okay, okay. Here we go. Okay, 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 okay. Shut the fuck up, Kent. Raven. Kent Hoven, uh, Toko Lincoln Sawyer. Raven wrote this. Zero six four five twenty seventeen. Cunt Cunt Hoven Link. Okay. Cunt Hoven Toko Lincoln Sawyer twenty six. Kent Cunt. Hoven, Toko, Lincoln, Sawyer, 0645-2017. This book, and this book, and this book, Raven, name on the cover here. Here's the one they're showing on the screen here, 2020 edition. Okay, show the, show the drawings then. Are the drawings in there? Then show them. Of Raven's textbook. He's one of the authors here, the, the lead author. <sighs> How many pages is this book? Uh... 1,300 and something, okay? Does Raven in the night in the 2020... Is, is someone correct just because I say she is? No. It can't beat me in a debate? No. Am I desperately trying to redeem myself? No. So shut the fuck up. Just a couple years ago, does he still use embryology? Well, here it is. Raven said, early embryonic development shows similarities in some groups. Some of the strongest anatomical evidence supporting evolution Band. comes from comparisons of how organisms develop. Embryos of different types of vertebrates, for example, often Dude got fucking owned. Get the fuck out of my stream, poser. Are similar early on, but become more different as they develop. Early in their development, vertebrate embryos possess pharyngeal pouches. Huh. In humans, for example, they become various glands and ducts. In fish, they turn into gill slits. So he is using the idea of embryology in his book right here. You can come by and see it. Come visit Dinosaur Adventureland. We'll take, give you the tour. Here it is. No, I will never do that. If somebody has a... a <laughs> sorry. If somebody has a legitimate criticism uh, and they're creationists, I don't, I don't have a problem with that, but I'm just not going to tolerate these Hoven fans anymore who don't even watch the debates and just automatically assume that Kent wins every debate or people that leave fucking Bible verse comments on my channel. Like, I'm just going to delete that shit. Like, I'm just sick and tired of it. I have enough engagement on my channel to where I don't need to tolerate comments from these idiots. It is right here on page 455, no, 454. Embryonic development evidence for evolution. So nobody's using that anymore. Well, Raven is. Somebody ought to straighten him out, okay? Let's see. Creation.com did this great article about it. Ernst Haeckel, proven false. Let's see. As from tw as early as 25 days old, the human embryo already displays a, a clear pericardial bu card bulge, where the heart's going to be, soon becoming a heart bulge. This was all changed. Even uh, Richardson changed the drawings to try to rescue Haeckel, okay? Re Let's see. Who else does this? Jo Joseph Raver, uh, C.C. Starr. I've got a lot of these books by these authors right here in my library. You can come see them. A.J., come spend a couple of days. We'll get you converted, okay? Uh, Holt, but these, oh, these, are, these are the books that this person listed as still teaching embryology. They're still teaching it as evidence for evolution. K.C. Luskin wrote the article, uh, Associate Director and Senior Fellow at Center for Science and Culture. is a geologist and an attorney with a graduate degree in science and law giving him expertise in both the scientific and legal dimensions of the debate. Earned his PhD in geology from University of Johannesburg, South Africa, a BS and MS from Earth Sciences from the University of California, San Diego. He studied evolution extensively at both graduate and undergraduate levels. His law degree from University of San Diego. Is, is he qualified to make this list of books that still teach evolution? He's not qualified, yeah. He said, these are the books that are still teaching this gill slit stuff. You might want to take it up with him. Okay, Casey. University of California. Review. Haeckel's Embryos, Images, Evolution, and Fraud. Wow. 
and calling it a fraud. That's pretty serious. Ernst Haeckel's fraudulent proofs of evolution may have helped cause the abortion that killed my baby. Oh, my God. Shut up, dude. That's so, that's just so stupid. Really? Ernst Haeckel's fraudulent proofs for evolution may have helped to cause the abortion that killed my baby, a victim of infanticide. If you're that stupid, then you shouldn't have kids. So good. A victim of infanticide. Hmm. Who was Ernst Haeckel? So I point out that in my seminar and have for many years and will continue to point out that this whole idea of embryology proving evolution is wrong. It's a lie. It's based. I am. I am slightly annoyed. It's just this, this shit about Kent repeating to uh, try and uh, dox me when I asked him nicely not to. You know, it's like, you know, it's like, you know, that somebody doesn't want you to do something and you're just doing it. When you're 70, 71 years old and you're acting like you're in the fourth grade, like, and it's not like it, it really matters, but it just shows that if Kent had, it's like, where, where would he draw the line? Uh, Cause he's asked me repeatedly to send me, for me to send me him my address. I'm like, no, Ken, I'm not going to send you my address when you uh, have no problem just giving out personal information about me and everybody else that you debate. That's the reason I think ultimately I, I said a long time ago that the reason Kent wants to debate so many people is that it's a scam to collect people's personal information. I don't know why he wants to do that. I think it's just a way of him to fuck with atheists like, oh, I'm going to challenge atheists to debates and then I'm going to demand their personal information like when he wouldn't debate Dapper Dino because he doesn't show himself on camera, which is just so stupid. Like there's no reason that you need pe people's uh, legal name or that to see their image on camera to debate them. It's totally irrelevant. On a fraud, you understand AJ? Whether there was a trial or not is a rat red herring, okay? You're trying to- No, it's not. You, you, you desperately want to get off the subject of the trial because you admitted you don't have evidence, Ken. Divert attention. The fact is, it's a fraud. Why? Why is it a fraud? You can't show why it's a fraud. Whether there was a trial or not. I'm going to find out if there was a trial. Anybody in Germany, please help me out. Well, good luck, little Kenty. All right. This is, I'm bored of this. So um, I said that I would play my song I made for you guys. And I'll play the other audio clip that I made. You guys should be able to hear this. Big bank, big bank. I got a really, really, really big bank. I really, really, really need the whole thing. Need the whole zip, need the whole key. Got a few birds, let them spread the rings. White bitch, gonna let us sing. Give me that crown and call me king. Wrist so iced out hockey ring. Brian Zamboni with Mark Stoney. Montana, no Hannah. Cooking on the stove, mix the arm and hammer. Water wrist rip, wrist so flick. My girl this thick and the speed is sick. I spit that heat, better call me Vic. And you really not my dog, no Michael Vic. And fuck Brett Key, man, what a prick. Situation, why you hatin'? Can't hoin', exaggerating. If you a Mac, why you always home masturbating? Chameleonaire, I got blue hair. And I know I get more bitches, life ain't fair. And I won't eat the pussy that she used Nair. Bitch, I'm out. Fuck missing mod too. <laughs> uh and uh, i'll i'll link the lyrics in the uh chat and then sorry this is e an email with aiden okay and this is the other thing i made oh boy we just got back from watching the seminar by dr hovind <laughs> Boy, what, what was the uh, what was that part that I was laughing at, uh, Darlene? What is it? Oh, it was the part with the with the frog. Oh, with the frog, the jump, frog, jump. <laughs> it's funny right there. I was, 
Oh yeah, we he was laughing so hard he was spitting in the person's face next to it. Oh <laughs> yeah, yeah they had to they had to get a napkin or something. But I said that Doctor Holbein he really knows about the science. So I certainly don't know what the heck science is. I I believe it's some type of a cream. Uh, I heard it was a new flavor of mayonnaise. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, <laughs> this is the type of stuff that I, I end up sending to people like Big Bad Mama because uh, um, I'm just uh, I'm always coming up with weird ca characters in my head and like I I am a weird person who just kind of talks to myself a lot when I'm alone because like my my brain just kind of never stops going so I kind of will just I don't know uh, so I, I figure why let it go to waste. And so sometimes I just record the weird shit that I, I say to entertain myself. So I did shout out Mark Stoney in the track. Um, uh, I'll put a link. I'll post the lyrics in the description of this video. And um, if anybody wants, I'll put a link to the song. But yeah, I think that's going to do it for the uh, stream. Um, Kent's video is just getting really b boring. So I'm like, you know, it, I try to cut the streams out at, a, at an hour mark, cut them off. I mean, uh, once it gets to be an hour, cause I get a lot of messages from people who say that they watch these videos at work or that they listen to me, um, when they're going to sleep, which is interesting. Um, I do that with YouTube videos too, but so I try to put out a good chunk of content when I do put something out. Um, so, yeah. So basically, you know the drill at this point. Uh, like the video. Leave a comment telling me what you thought. Do you think that Kent showed that he has evidence of Haeckel's trial? Or do you think that I was right, that he doesn't have evidence? And what did you think of my debate if you, if you didn't already leave a comment? Um, Check out my Discord server. I'll post a link uh, on there uh, to get invited to it. It's been popping off. There's like a, there's like 30 something members in there and we have really good discussions. Um, and I get on voice chat and talk with people. If you wanna contact me, uh, it's much faster than email cause I don't check my email. Um, it's way easier for me to just get on the Discord and like, it's really fun. It's been a really good experience. Um, just the amount of positivity and, and and nice, cool people that I've been able to interact with on the Discord. So I was resistant to making a server, but you know somebody finally talked me into it. Um, so yeah, definitely check out the Discord server. Um, and if you want to support my channel past subscribing to it, which you should really subscribe if you if you're not subscribed please please do cuz I'm only I'm 300 subs away from 9000 subscribers which is crazy and like you know that means that I'm I, I'm getting close to 10k which would just be fucking awesome if I could get to 10,000 subscribers that would be so fucking epic so please subscribe to the channel if you haven't I know subscribe subscriptions don't really matter on YouTube that much anymore because um, if you watch a, a channel, YouTube is going to recommend you their videos anyway. So it's like, what's the point of even subscribing? But it's just a good, it's just a good indicator on somebody's ch page. It just, you know, the, of their engagement, it just looks good. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, I just want to reach that goal because that would be so cool. So subscribe, please subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Um, but if you want to support me past just subscribing, watching the videos and leaving comments, which is more than enough, um, you can consider leaving a financial donation uh, on Patreon. There, I'm not, uh, you don't have to, I'm just saying this is strictly optional, but if you, if you want to, you can go to my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash atheist junior. Or you can look at my YouTube channel memberships, which is, um, which if you sign up for that, you get custom emojis in the in the live chat, and you get some other 
um, benefits like members, ex member, member exclusive community posts and videos. Um, and I also have a, a PayPal link. If you want to make a direct donation, I'll put that in the uh, description of the video. But anyway, enough, enough with my shilling. Um, thank you so much to the people who uh, watched my debate. It's it's somebody who mentioned the views on it. It's it's getting like a thousand views a day. Like it was at like seven thousand yesterday, and I checked it now. It's up to like eight thousand, eighty eight hundred. So um, yeah, thank you to the people who watched it and left positive comments on there because uh, it really means a lot to me. So thank you. Um, and yeah, shout out to yeah, shout out to Justin and uh, and Ty. Tyrannotherium was one of my very first subscribers ever. So thank you for sticking with the channel and one of my day ones. Thank you to all the people. I have a lot of subscribers who have been with me from the very beginning. So you guys have seen the growth of the channel. So thank you for like sticking with me. Um, I really that, I really appreciate that because I like to think that my, my content has gotten better and I haven't like changed. Uh, but anyway, um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Hope you enjoyed the stream. I'll put the yeah, um, put the Discord link in there, and I'll have it in the pin comment because the invite link eventually times out. Anyway, see you later.